Let's just jump right into our book nook. I'm using some quarter inch birch ply and my overall book nook shape or size is about eight inches by 11 inches deep. And it's about three, three and a half inches wide, three and a half inches wide. It turns out 11 inches was actually a little too deep for my bookcase. I probably should have made it maybe about a half inch shallower because once everything's said and done and it was slid into the bookcase, I didn't have a lot of room for cords in the back. I'm using quarter inch birch ply for this and all of my pieces are cut to size and then glued up using standard wood glue. I do like these little orange plastic right angles and small clamps to help make sure that everything remains square. One of the things that I seem to really consistently whiff on is actually planning ahead for the book nook. And by that, I mean finding the right places to hide wiring, especially for LEDs and lighting. One of the things I tried to do with this particular one was have the back panel slightly recessed. So I had room for my Arduino uh, microcontroller, but then I completely forgot about where I was going to put the lighting in the ceiling and I just didn't really allow for that out of the gate. And so we'll see later on, I had to put some structures in to help support that and hide that. This one was a really tough one because there was a lot of geometry involved with the actual Pepper's Ghost and the mirror in the back. Um, no, mirror in a bathroom. That's a slightly different thing. Okay, for the flooring, Popsicle sticks. This was a bad move, just flat out. There's a lot of bad moves in this, but popsicle sticks was one of them. They are really hard to cut. They're tough little buggers. Um, and when I started to stain and varnish and finish them, they tended to cup a little bit. So not only did they warp, which was okay for a haunted book nook, they just really were a lot of effort and not really specifically um, the best solution here. I probably would have used uh, balsa cut into strips or maybe just balsa that was um, impressed or embossed and scored. For the staining, I used Liquitex Burnt Umber ink, a little bit of varnish or a little bit of medium and some water to just give it a tint after I had already given it a wash of the Burnt Umber. I really like using Liquitex, uh, primarily the Burnt Umber and Ivory Black uh, because they're transparent, they dry very quickly, and they have a really nice rich color to them. So a couple of coats of sort of a clear varnish with a bit of a tint to it to finish out the floor. The next thing I needed to do was create the wallpaper. And so I actually changed the wallpaper sort of halfway through and went to something that I actually created rather than something I scraped off the web. But the doors are resin printed and I wanted to make sure that the scale of the wallpaper really matched to the overall scale of the doors. Now for gluing in the wallpaper, I like to use a material called Yes Paste. It is one of my favorite pastes and or adhesives. And the reason I love this is because it's water soluble. It's extremely low water content though. And what that means is it's very thick and it will go down really nicely. But because the water content is low, it's not gonna buckle or curl paper, even fairly thin paper, and it will hold very, very well. It's also archival, so you don't have to worry so much about um, acid damage for things that you wanted to protect. I was really dumb about painting the inside on the wood. It was hard to get to, and you're probably wondering, Dalen, why didn't you just paint the back of the paper? Yeah, uh-huh. Okay, now, we do need something to hold our Timku player. And so for that, what I ended up doing was taking some styrene and just building a little holder for it, a little case where the player will be able to slide down and it's got a cutout window for the screen. I need to be able to slide the pl player in and out of the book nook to either recharge it or to change um, 
video files or to make it play because I won't be able to get into the book nook once everything is all sealed up. So a little bit of styrene, a little bit of glue, and then making this little uh, sliding holder. Now I looked at a bunch of different ways and a bunch of different places I could put the player to make it accessible, but this uh, ultimately ended up being sort of the least common denominator and just mounting it to the side of the book nook and then reflecting it into that hallway area. So the next thing I need to do is create a couple of walls. And for that, I just use some sheet balsa wood. I tend to buy sort of those bulk grab bag packs of balsa wood that have a bunch of different sizes of panels and little strips. And I can use those to make all sorts of little trim. And for that, I just created a couple of walls. One is going to obscure the back, the mirror portion of the book nook. And then the other one divides the space and hides the Pepper's ghost. This wallpaper is new wallpaper. I grabbed some clip art of a Baroque pattern and then added some eyeballs to it and printed those out. I just used little strips of the balsa wood to trim everything up and these will all get painted using just regular brown acrylic with washes and dry brushing and all sorts of good stuff like that. We also need a bunch of stuff to populate or to decorate and so jumping on Thingiverse I found a bunch of stuff. I found things like picture frames and tables and sculptures, busts for the table, a grandfather clock. About the only thing that I didn't find on Thingiverse was the door which I created. Uh, for the picture frames, just finding images online and then bringing them into a photo editing tool of some sort, scaling everything down and then just printing those out, we'll just glue all of those up. This is now the book nook with basically sort of the bones in place. The wallpaper is on both sides, the floor is in place, and the mirror has been put in the back. I also have added some framework up above that is going to hold the lights. There's a back wall, there's sort of a middle wall. The back wall already has some pictures mounted on it. Here is my video player and it's going to sit right in that little slot right there and hold the video player. Couple of doors, one smaller than the other for a little bit of forced perspective and then a couple of panels to hold the LED lighting in place. I'm always a little nervous to start final assembly, but here is the back wall in place and the back door. And you can see that it's actually working out pretty well with the reflection to give that illusion of a doorway sort of beyond the back of the book nook. The other thing I wanted to think about is where does this Pepper's Ghost plexiglass fit in? So it needs to sit at about a 45 degree angle and I need to be able to hide the edge of it and it's really sort of became sort of a pain in the butt. And what I ended up doing was using this little curtain that I created to hide that edge of the plexiglass. So here's the front wall with the curtain in its position. Once everything's glued in, this is what it looks like. We've got the front wall in place. All of the ceiling panels have been glued in and mounted. And I've been able to hide effectively that plexiglass with that curtain in front. The LEDs are all just run from a single NeoPixel three wire connection. And so I've got them glued in and I've got little bits of hot glue as sort of little thing hold downs. And then the three wires run to the back. And for this, what I'm using is uh, just an Arduino and I've got my power in, my power button, the wires are coming in from the NeoPixel strands into the Arduino. I've got my resistor in place for my data line, and I've got my electrolytic capacitor. 
So I needed a few things to finish up the front, and for that, I went back to Thingiverse and I found this cool uh, grandfather clock. These are all 3D printed on an Elegoo Mars, this Queen Anne table with a bust, kind of a scary bust. I think this is actually something from the Haunted Mansion. And then a urn with a little bit of foam foliage. The book nook was covered in walnut veneer. Now you don't need to do this, but one of the things I like about it is if you match up the grain, it starts to really look like a piece of monolithic walnut. And I think that's kind of cool. Walnut's a beautiful wood in and of itself, but I did want this to have a little bit of color to it. And so I'm using an alcohol-based Purple Heart finish. Now, unfortunately, this stain is available from, or not available actually, it's from a local hardwood molding manufacturer. It's really beautiful and it's kind of my precious reserve of this uh, Purple Heart finish that I was able to get from them. It works really, really well on walnut and it dries in a heartbeat. It's really quick to move from staining to finishing. Now for the finish, I'm using Polycrel. Um, it's a water-based uh, satin varnish. No real endorsement here. Uh, this was just sitting around in the garage. You can see the can's a little manky and kind of rusted. It's been kicking around. Um, my preference here though is that it's water-based and I like whenever possible to use water-based finishes because they're easy to clean up, they're low odor generally, and they dry really fast. So it allows me to move from layer to layer to build up layers. I don't have to wait overnight between coats so I can build up a finish usually in a few hours um, and just be moving forward and moving on. And the reality is this is not gonna get a lot of wear and tear. It's gonna be sitting in a bookcase and the actual case sides are really not visible. So a lot of this work is actually a little bit of work for not a lot of ultimate visibility, but it's got some reward. For the front, you've really got sort of a challenge here because you need a little bit of trim molding, which you could make in a bunch of different ways using some strips and building out. I just used some pine that I routed out and built into a little bit of a frame. I also wanted to spruce it up with some stuff that looked kind of architectural like the Haunted Mansion in New Orleans Square. So I found this thing that looks like wrought iron grill work and I got that printed 3D. It was feeling a little boring, so I built up some cornice sort of molding using the balsa wood um, just to give it a little bit more of a architectural reference as well. Now, one of the things I wanted to do then is give it a base coat and then weather it. And to weather it, I'm using this crackle varnish. Now, crackle varnish is sort of tricky. The key thing here is you want to start with con, you want to definitely have contrasting colors. So whatever's underneath that you're going to see through the crackles, it needs to have contrast with your top coat. So in this case, I've got a really dark purple color, which was tying to the purple wallpaper in the book nook. With the crackle varnish, the key here is it's a sort of a thickness uh, equation. The thicker the crackle varnish that you apply, and then the thicker the paint you apply over it once it's dried, the bigger the cracks you'll get. So you don't want to go too lean or too thin on your crackle varnish or else the effect's going to be pretty minimal. You can see here it has some of the crackling already going on the upper coat. And one of the things you want to be very careful of is that you don't overwork the top coat. So when you go to apply your, your top coat of contrasting color, you definitely want to basically be one and done. So make sure that you've got your paint handy, you got enough of it, and you're not gonna have to pause and do something in between. So I'm applying really a kind of a big honking, heavy coat of this antique white color. And as it dries, and it dries pretty quickly, you're gonna immediately start to see it crack on the surface. It's gonna sort of crawl on the surface. As your paint is starting to dry, you definitely don't want to overwork it or else it's just simply going to fill in all of the cracks that are forming as it's been applied. 
With everything just dry, our final assembly was the glass and that wrought iron effect, but we're really ready at this point to test it out. And so the basic operation is that the player just slides down into the little holder that was created and it plays a looping video of a rear projection ghost. The nice thing about this is that I can actually take this USB cable and I can plug it into a wall transformer, a wall charger, and just run this almost continuously. It's also how I pull that thing out of its holder. Now, overall, I was really happy with the way this turned out. The big challenge was really to build the geometry for the Pepper's Ghost effect and get the rooms sort of div divided up in a way that made sense. And I could look in and there were details and, you know, really there's just a lot of geometry, which I kind of suck at. I do hope you found this interesting, exciting. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, all of that good stuff. Thanks for watching and we will see you back really soon. Shh. <laughs>